May I have your attention, please? Good evening. You're listening to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. We thank you for tuning in and hope you enjoy another exciting episode of our show. Welcome to another episode of Straight Talk with Dee Mark. It's a little rainy up here in New Jersey, but as always, from NJ to NC, I'm in the studio with my right-hand man, Mark Lee. So, Mark, tell me what's good in your neck of the woods, my brother. Uh-oh. We're going to get him back in just one second. I think he jumped off the car, but uh, we waiting for him to get back in. I'm going to let the music play. For this two seconds, because he's back now. Mark, tell him what's good in your neck of the woods, my brother. Everything is going well here in the uh, Triangle area. You know, Durham, Raleigh, Chapel Hill, and all of that fun kind of stuff. We actually had a uh, showing of artwork over at the Haytown Heritage Center. They got a new exhibit up there. I think it's about 11 or 12 artists, and they were displaying some work. So we did that on Friday. And there's actually an exhibit that deals with the uh, black experience in various European countries. So that's shown as well. So I know that among the countries is uh, Denmark, France, England, and various other European countries. Uh, So that's uh, just kind of like exploring our history and uh, going to some of those European countries and what we experience when we go there. So it's more of a uh, historical kind of display, less of the traditional kind of artwork because it's more of a narrative kind of form. But it does talk about okay. some of the things that go on when you go to those various countries and gives some historical perspective as well as some current events kind of perspective as well. So definitely an interesting exhibit. I know folks will be interested in that. And then uh, this weekend, we've actually got tomorrow um, Sweet Chariot, which will kind of look at uh, some of the traditional spirituals and things of that nature. And then over the weekend coming up, we've got our film festival, our annual film festival. So there'll be a lot of filmmakers in town celebrating uh, African-American Southern filmmakers, and so we're looking forward to that. It's going to okay. be one dealing with uh, funeral homes and things of that nature. It's going to be one that's going to feature uh, Bree Newsom. I think this one has got uh, Mike Anderson involved as well. You know, Mike has been a past guest here on our show and everything, mm-hmm. so definitely some films that folks will enjoy checking out. Desmera Gatewood has got a film there. That's uh, Curtis Gatewood, who's a uh, civil rights person here in the area. That's his daughter, and she's got a film uh, that is uh, dealing with some current events kind of stuff as well. So definitely if folks want to go uh, to the uh, Haytai website, there should be information about that, which is www.haytai.org. And there's also, I believe, a separate website for the film festival as well. But either way, they can find out about the activities going on with the uh, film festival and see this great programming that is coming their way very shortly. Like I said, it'll kick off on uh Thursday and uh, run all the way through Saturday uh, night, Saturday night, and then, you know, Saturday night going practically into Sunday morning, we've got an event that they do every year, and it's definitely very popular by a lot of folks, because that is something that's been going on annually for a number of years, and that is our erotic poetry slam, so a lot of folks really are into okay. that whole thing, and they love coming to check that out, so they don't even start that thing till about midnight and it goes into the wee hours and yes wow. folks do get a little bit on the uh, wild side and they have some good times <laughs> with those poems and everything but uh, it, it's definitely an interesting thing going on so as a part of the uh, film festival though coming back to that there's going to be a hundredth anniversary of the Harlem Renaissance an area that you are very mm-hmm. familiar with so that's going to be going on and that'll be taking place on uh, Saturday the 15th they are also going to be showing on uh, when, uh, Thursday to kind of kick off everything. That morning is the 25th anniversary screening of John Singleton's Higher Learning. So there are definitely some uh, good films that will be coming years? in. Then there's some 25 Ooh. years since Higher Learning came out. John Singleton Man, put that movie out. <laughs> <laughs> that means it's are almost feeling- 30 years. Wait, wait. So if that's 25 years. That means that it's almost 30 years since Boys in the Hood came out. 
I feel old. Man. Hey, you you got it. We're getting old. I hate to say it. <laughs> wow. Oh my. MFO. So, There's always something we, we, down there, though, man. Golly, y'all keep it moving down there. We keep it rolling. I mean, even the following week, I think that next weekend is going to be the Nevermore Festival over there at the Carolina Theater, which is going to be dealing with like uh, horror and suspense kind of movies. So yeah, we try to keep things rolling on a on a regular basis, and that's just what's going on, like I said, around Haytown, but you know, the Durham Arts Council has got things going on, there's things going on at the Golden Belt, which has got, like, different art galleries and things of that nature, um, mm-hmm. there's different art galleries throughout the area, Duke's always got things going on, Central has always got things going on, even Durham Tech has got things going on in the cultural world, so, and then, of course, we've got, like, some world-renowned uh, people doing stuff even on the high school level. Mr. Tab does a lot of great things with the Hillside uh, drama program, and Xavier Kaysen does some stuff uh, with the music stuff tied into that high school as well, and that's just one of the high schools. So, like I said, we do try to keep things moving on the uh, cultural and the social tip, and of course, you know, this is a rich tradition of activism as well, so the activists have always got things going on as well. You know, that Alexandria, who's been on the show a number of times, is running for the um, school board. We've got a couple of folks that have been on the show in the past, like uh, John Rooks and LaVon Barnes that are running for different offices. So, yeah, we've had some past guests mm-hmm. that are either trying to hold on to their seats, like Brenda Howarden, or trying to gain some seats, like what Alexandria is doing, and I believe John is as well. So we've got folks, you know, definitely out there doing the campaigning and things of that nature. So we, we try not to have a uh, dull moment here in the Triangle area of North Carolina. Try to keep things Ripping and rolling, uh, and, you know, we got to do that because the world is also a mess as well. Because you know, we got people over there yeah. partying idiots. I mean, they're not just partying, partying folks. I mean, first of, you know, I heard rumors that he said that he could pardon himself after Andrew Yang had earlier said that he would think about pardoning to kind of like alleviate some of this tension between different folks in different parts of society. So Andrew Yang, the Democratic candidate, said that he might consider pardoning Trump if he was elected. But even no matter what people might think about that, I was too through <laughs> when Trump came up there and gave the Congressional Medal of Freedom to Rush Limbaugh. I'm sitting there going like, Rush? You got to anything is Not possible. Rush. <laughs> Any, bruh, anything is possible. Look at who is giving the awards. So that should not surprise you. Not one single solitary <laughs> bit. Now, see, we, I, I, you know what? I can only say, you know what? Let's let's just flip the script real quick. Football is back. The XFL yeah. had their inaugural games this weekend. None of the uh, silliness from the first iteration is actually good football. I'm rolling with the New York Guardians. They took out the Tampa Bay Vipers yesterday, 23-3. to So I'm just waiting for uh, another week of good football. I think it's like eight weeks. But that's better than beating a blank and having to wait until August. So, you know, football's back, man. Just like the crazy yep. man is at 1,600, football is back, y'all. <laughs> and, you know, we got football back, and that's a good thing. And, we, and you are right. We do have a crazy man at 1600. I hear the bell ringing, so I know one of our guests is there, and that's what I was hoping they would get here earlier. But, you know, that crazy man unveiled a proposal to earlier today that, if approved in full, would lead to steep funding cuts to social assistance programs and slash projected long-term spending on Medicare and Social Security, items that the president had vowed to leave undisturbed by his administration's budgetary chopping block. So, you know, I guess he's already feeling empowered and feeling like he can just do whatever he feels like because he's going to go after some stuff that a lot of folks already are depending on on a regular basis. He said the four, they say the $4.8 trillion budget proposal boosts defense spending in the short term but slashes federal spending with politically unrealistic cuts of more than 37% to the Department of Commerce, more than 26% to the Environmental Protection Agency, and nearly 13% to the Department of Transportation. I don't know about you, and I just depend on mass transit, but friends of mine that are driving on cars and everything are always complaining about how rough the roads are in various parts of the nation, and he wants to cut the budget of the Department of Transportation, which is actually the folks that help fix the roads. So I don't understand that at all, but, hey, I'm not the one that is trying to make these decisions and everything, and I think that we've got a crazy man trying to make the decisions. That's just my take on it. He's already... Taking his, taking his axe to all kinds of things 
that do not need the axe taken to them. You know what? <laughs> we are less than nine months away, brother. We are less than nine months away. It's time to start getting serious about who can replace the madness. Nine months, yeah. y'all. We got nine months. So we've made it this far. Let's get these nine months in, and let's get somebody out. And let's see what we can do with that. Um, We're going to rock this commercial, and then when we come back, we'll have a Duque Arimu here with us. On Blog yes. Talk Radio, it's Straight Talk with Dean and Mark, y'all. Sounds good. The old renaissance is the new renaissance. Standing on tradition while embracing the spirit of distinction. This is the Harlem Brewer Company. Uniquely crafted beer brewed to deliver a taste, a sound, and a feeling that can only be described in one way. Harlem style. So come and take a trip on the A-Train. With our Harlem Sugar Hill Golden Ale and our Harlem Renaissance Whiskey, the neighborhood original. All right, I do can't read more. Welcome to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. You are now on the line. Thank you so very much. How are you doing, Aduke? This is Mark over here on the line with you. I've met Aduke a number of years back. We've met over at the National Black Theater Festival. I, um, guess I can be credited with uh, introducing her to one of her business partners who became a uh, life partner, and then they went their separate ways, and now they seem to be back to being life partners again and everything. <laughs> so I guess I can be blamed for making that introduction way back when when uh, I was living yeah. in Winston-Salem, where the National Black Theater Festival was taking place and everything of that nature. So I did that many, many years ago. So we've gone through many decades, and Aduke has done a lot of great work in the artistic community, being a playwright, just being an amazing lady all around. I'm still trying to figure out how she's putting up with trying to be a change agent, because she does consider herself a change agent during these mad times that we are in because uh, we're in some definitely some interesting times, but we need even more change agents that we've actually got going on. And I know that that's one of the things that Duke prides herself in, is trying to use theater as a means to try to communicate with people and solve some of these world problems that we've got, not just the national problems, but world problems that we've got going on. And she's done it with some very uh, humorous plays, some serious plays. She's actually covered the spectrum, as far as I can tell, in terms of her playwriting abilities and things of that nature. So I guess that's where we'll start at. And like I said, I know we've got a number of questions that we do want to touch base with you, but we are definitely in some hard times for artistic people. I mean, as I just mentioned, I talked about the cuts that were going on in some of the departments, but we know that there are definitely cuts in the artistic fields as well. We don't even want to think about what he's going to do to the uh, various artistic organizations that are national in terms of cutting them. We've had other presidents, including some that we liked, that did some of those cuts in those organizations. And now we've got this madman, so there's no telling what kind of cuts we might get. So how do you deal with trying to create this kind of great artwork that you do during these hard times when we're in this middle, middle of this political madness? Well, my philosophy has always been to be self-sufficient with the black art form. Um, I grew up in Harlem. I, I was born in Harlem, and my parents, in fact, were, were migrants from Savannah, Georgia. My mother and father moved to, to New York City, and I was born in Harlem, USA, and I was raised in Harlem until I was six years old, and then we moved to Brooklyn, and Brooklyn was a training ground for me. I always say to people, if you know anything about New York, during those times, Brooklyn was really hardcore, and what we what we learn to do, and I learned at an early age, is to not depend on necessarily outside funding, but to galvanize your talents in your community. And I was heavily funded in New York by, I call it the black community. Um, I What I believe is that I never take no for an answer. Mark knows that about me because he, he roamed with me one, one National Black Theater Festival. Dean, Mark was my right arm. We put up one of my new plays called okay. Sonata. And Mark uh-huh. went everywhere with me. And we actually auditioned at the festival. We had 13 actors in the production. 